Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. I hope you can hear me this morning. I'm a little stuffy, but God is yet good. Uh, just coming back from travel and um, got a little something in me. Uh, wasn't feeling well, but God was able to push me through and us through to get back into uh, Kansas City and to to love on my people. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, again, bringing glad tidings from the House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, where our pastor is Bernard Crawford Jr. and where our first lady is Prophetess Trina Crawford. Um, great, loving, loving people. And we love them so much. Uh, we thank God for them. We thank God for this whole youth month. For those that don't know, we celebrated youth month. And starting from the beginning to the end, we had an awesome, awesome time. I'm praying that those listening today were able to come out and be part and partake in some of our um, our ministries and some of the things that have went on. And if not, I'm praying that as we go forward, because we're going to continue continue to do God's work, I'm praying that you are able to be part with partner up with us and come in and as we worship and as we praise together and as we give God the glory. Um, again, today's lesson. Uh, before I get to rambling and talking, because I didn't get to uh, talk to you last week. But this week, and this is just a, a little snippet of, of where I'm beginning in this series of God's power given to the believers. I'm going to say it again. God's power given to the believers. This is a short word, something just to kick off this series. Um, but how many of you know out there that God gives us the same power, the same power that he gave Christ? Now, we know Christ is his son, but he also adopted us in as his children. And some of the same power that was given to Christ was given to us. It was an a, a overflow to us for us to be able to walk in the, in, the, in the anointing, in the Holy Spirit, for us to be able to do miracles and signs and wonders, to do the things that Christ did. He put those things in us. And so today we want to talk about that. We want to talk about how God's power that was given to the believers he gave us so much, but the power is so important for the believer because without the power, we can't do anything. We can't move. We can't, we can't have our being, you know, like the scripture tells us in Acts, you know. So he gives us the strength and he gives us everything that we need to move on and to do the works that he gave us, but we have to have power behind it. It's nothing just talking about it, speaking about it, singing about it, but it's moving in it, and that's the power of it. If you would, if you would go with, into prayer with me um, as we go into this, um, this, this, this word today. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you again, even for myself, from traveling, being able to get on the planes and off, Lord. Even through sickness, God, you have kept me and healed me, Lord. And I thank you. I thank you, God, for you remembering me, having you on, my, on your mind. Always keeping me in, 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 in your view, Lord, allowing me to be able to do the things that probably some of the things that you probably don't even um, think about us wanting to do, God, but you know and you give us the desires to still do. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the love given. We thank you for the financial blessings, God. We thank you for the healing power, Lord. We thank you for uh, your grace and your mercy that you bestowed upon us. Lord, today I'm asking God, as I read your word, as I speak your word, as I do your word, God, I'm asking that you would just hide me behind your, your cloth, behind your cross, God, that you may be glorified in it all. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Again, um, this, this message for those just coming in, God's power given to the believers. And so this right here, I just want to encourage you this morning in this short, short word. Um, I'm going to read through Ephesians. This is Ephesians, the first chapter of Ephesians 15 through 23. I'm going to read the scriptures. I'm going to give you a couple of details on that, and I'm done for the day. But I want to leave this with you because this is going to kick us, kickstart you in looking at yourself and evaluating what God did. And now we're talking about Paul. We're talking about um, Paul's prayer is what we're reading. And talking about how this works also in our lives. Uh, 15 reads, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Again, this is Paul praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give to you 
the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18, and the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. It means your eyes opening up to hearing what he says. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. That are the riches of, his, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And 19, and what is it? The exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. I want y'all to put a pin in that because this is really where we, where we want to really want to get our meat from. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? OK, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. And 21 for above all principalities, no matter what the, the deal is, that's going on, it says through all above all principalities and power and might of dominion and every name that is named, not only in the age, but also in that which is to come. Showing how powerful he is, giving us the same power within and then 22 says and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him and fills all in all so think about this so let's look at the scripture and let's look at it and dissect it from 15 to 23 where when it starts out, it's letting us know that by faith, the first thing is, is it's starting with faith. You have to have faith. And, and guess what? Because behind faith, there is power. There is power in your faith. It's power in prayer. But in your prayer, you have to have faith that it's going to go through, that it will manifest itself. All of these things deal with it. And so this is the problem that we have nowadays. We have so many people who are faithless. We have gotten to a place where we have fallen off. And so sometimes I wonder, and, and, and take this personal or don't take it personal, I wonder when you've fallen off as bad as we do sometimes, I'm not telling you that we don't have problems. I'm not telling you that we don't have doubtful moments. I'm talking about fall off where now we just don't believe that there ever was a Jesus, that there, there's no God. Sometimes I wonder, did you really have the faith? Did you really stand in where God had you to be? Because in that, with the power that he in, that we invested, that he had invested in us, that he had uh, endowed in us, that he had uh, given us and dwelled in us, then when it comes down to believing and trusting God, there's a lot of things we might not believe in, but we should believe in him. We should believe in the Savior. And so because behind that and believing that there is power. So if we believe in that, then we believe in healing and that we believe in miracles. We believe that that those debt or counsel. We believe that, that the, the things that we're looking for, the job and the house and the home and the, the things, because he is our power. He is our source. As long as we're plugged in into the, his outlet, we have power. So I, I just wanted to hit on that. This is not in my in notes or anything. I just wanted to talk about that because there is power given to the believers. In Ephesians, look, in Ephesians 15 through 23, Paul's prayer for the Ephesians they increased their understanding concerning what he said. In other words, when he had prayed and he had prayed for the, the uh, Ephesus church or the Ephesians, for those in, in that particular time, when he had prayed and he did this and those that he had encountered, it tells us that it was an increase of understanding through his prayer, but also through his epistles, through his letters that were given. And those letters that were given was made to build the church up. And when it's built up, it's just like working out. When you're built up, guess what? You got more power. You might start with less weight when you start out. You might start out with the 20 on the side, the 10s on the side. And then you build your way up on the bench. And that's how you begin to get power. But you have to stay in it. You got to stay in the faith to keep the power. So when we look at this, when we look at Ephesians 15, 23, there are three things that we look at that, that were said in there. The hope of his calling. That's one. The other thing is, is the riches of his glory of his inheritance is in the saints. And also the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. So that right there should give you, you should be empowered right there to know that if you are a believer and rather you, you possess a small 
portion of power right now. And what it also tells us, and I know that the TV, I mean, I, I know that Facebook kind of broke up a little bit, but I just want to let you know that even in this, God is still good. He is so powerful, even when we're powerless. Each of these three, in, in these three keys that can help us, we must consider them. Let's look at what it's saying. What kind of power is Paul writing about? We'll talk about that. How is the power manifested towards believers in Christ? Well, I'm glad you asked. One of the things is, and, and again, I told you, this is a short word. One of the things that is given that should help us today is just the nature, his first, his nature because of Christ and because Christ had came in and, and he was, he took on, remember he was, a, he was the, the Holy Spirit. So he took on the body of man so that he can walk upright, so that he'll give us a way and someone to see so that we could do the same. So in this, because he gave Christ that power, guess what? He done the same for us. So look at what the scripture says in Ephesians 1, 19 and 20. When God raised him from the dead. Also, I want y'all to, I want y'all to look at this. Don't look at the natural, look at the spiritual. He also has raised us from the dead. In other words, we were once dead we were once dead. Now we are alive. When we were living in sin, when we were living a worldly life, we were dead. God had put away and he wanted us to even do a second death and take that out so that we can be born again. One of the other things that he said in Ephesians, let's look at Ephesians 19 and 20, how it reads. In 19 and 20, it says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? according to the working of his mighty power. And so in that, he's letting us know that he has an exceeding greatness and an exceeding power that he has invested in us in the same way that he did for his son, Jesus Christ. And so he's letting us know that whatever that was there for him is still up here for us. When God exalted Christ to sit at his right hand in Ephesians 20, he also has given us the same thing. He's letting us know that as we walk in his power, in his dominion, as we do what he has called us to do, guess what? There's a resting place for us as well. But he's given us power while we're here yet on earth. He's given us a, the ability to do the things that he has called us to where man, where it's impossible in man. It is. In man, it's impossible. But through Christ, all things are what? They're possible. So let's look at this thing, when God put all things in subjection to Christ, that's in first, that's in, in Ephesians 1, 21 and 23. So as we lead, use these three scriptures in our lives, he's letting us know that even with subjection, when we look at what he does, anything that comes his way, he is put, he's able to put it aside. He's able to do whatever, and he's given us the same power. Then when things come against us, when trials and tribulations comes our way, he's given us the power to be able to walk over it. He's given us the ability to get past that thing. Look, the same power which gave life to a crucified man, I hope y'all hearing this, exalted him to the highest position possible in the universe. So he had brought in brought us a man, a savior that was all powerful, all knowing. He has also given us the same strength to be able to move into these areas. When your life, when your life is going crazy, when your husband is doing wrong or your wife is doing wrong, or and when I say doing wrong, I'm just saying whatever that thing is where y'all feuding, guess what? He's given you power even in silence. He's given you the power of prayer to bring things back to the way that they should be. He has given us that same power to pray and to go and lay hands on those. The Bible tells us to call the elders. He called those to come and lay hands and he said, and they will what? Recover. So he's given us that same power to do. Even myself, when I started feeling sick and, and, and my body was feel like it was breaking down, guess what? I began to pray. And I, and I trusted God no matter what was going on. And so many people was thinking, I mean, to myself, I was thinking, they probably think I might have COVID or they might think I got something going on. Even myself, in my mindset, I was like, man, is it COVID? Is it what's going on? Why do I got to get out of town and all of a sudden I break down? But guess what? Healing. 
he's able to heal within three days. You know how we look at the, at the scriptures when it says in three days. Mine was in three days, I rose again. In other words, I was back up again and ready to go. And so God just has a way of doing things. And sickness is not one of his, his things that he ever wants to do. But he allow, when things are allowed to happen, he uses those opportunities also to minister to us, even in our sicknesses. We just need to know. A lot of times we want to, we want God to touch it. He want, you want us to, to not allow us to go through certain things where God is saying, look, I need you to go through this, but I want you to have the strength and the power to believe in me when you're in that situation. And that's where we are today. Look, when death comes upon your, your life, and, and I, what I mean that is your family members or friends and things, we have to still hold up the banner. We have to still stand with power and trust in, in God. And no matter what the plan is, even when we don't believe it, we have to. Even with sickness, even when, when uh, your job, lo losing a job, I've lost a job. But guess what? It happens. But you still got to believe in God and the power that he gives us to be able to continue to go through even in spite of, to still take care of your financial obligations. Look, he's given us that same strength to move on. Look, if it's possible for God to raise his son and bring him up and do, he's doing the same thing with us. And he's given us a resting place even at the end. He's given us, look, it, even in that same thing, he gave, he gave Christ he, and subjected everything in heaven and earth to his authority. Well, do you remember from Adam and Eve when, 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 when he told us that he has given us dominion over the earth? Well, guess what? He's still given us that same dominion. We just have to have faith. I guarantee you, and I'm, I'm praying that as God continues to move and to do things in my life, that I'm able to go to Africa and some of these, these, these eastern um, areas and these, these places, these third world countries. I want to go to these place, to this place because I'm, I'm hearing and I'm watching video. They're still seeing signs and wonders. They're able to see people even raise up from the dead. And it's because of the power that they, it's because they believe. Just let me say that. And it's the power that they that they stand in to be able to move in that. And it's not us per se, but it's the power that God has invested in us that moves through us that may allow people to heal and, and to move on and to be able to be powerful. And so that's why it's so important today that we talk about it. There, he has given us the power. He has given power to the believers. Why are we so weak and weak-minded as believers? We need to ask ourselves that. He has manifested himself in the believers the same way he did Christ. So the question I ask you today, have you been risen from the dead? In other words, have you, as you even became a, a, a Christian, have you, are you still the same person? Did you just give your life over and say, hey, I'm, I believe you and, and, and I believe in Christ and then went back into the same person? Or are you alive? Are you really living in the power? Are you really doing what God has called you to do with the power he's given you? It makes no sense to have all that strength and not use it. He's doing this because he wants us the same way with his son. And he wants to exalt us to be on the right side of, of him, of God. And so today, again, this is a short word. Uh, it's just talking about as we start this series today. For these next couple of weeks, I just want to talk about the power given to the believer. He's given us so much. And I'll talk about some of the other things that the, the parts of the power, those things that we really want to concentrate on in our lives. There's certain things that some of us are very strong in and some things we're weaker in. And there's things that we have to build up. I'll give you an example. I always use the workout um, uh, analogies because, you know, I love to work out, um, even though I don't do it like I should as much as I used to. But anyway, my point is, is it's just like working out. When we go back and we look at, at the strength, the more that we stay in the gym and the more that we, we begin, our bodies get what we call muscle memory. And so even when you haven't done it in a while, once you get back in, it just takes over. And so even when you do a fall off or something happens to you, you're able to continue to stay and, and close and continue to do because of the re relationship that you have with your muscles. Same thing with Christ. It's the relationship that you have, and that's what helps you able to be able to power and to continue to, to push even when you don't feel like it. 
And so that's where God is doing with us. He knows that we are in, that he knows the, the weaknesses and he knows the things that we are, but we have to concentrate on those things. Look, I'm a person, I love the chest and the abs and the arms and hitting all that. And I like doing some of the legs, but not all the legs. Well, guess what? Those are the things that you need to do more of in the gym. Give me the natural sense. Look, we got to do more of the legs. We got to do more of the pushing of them because it really helps the full body. Well, it's the same thing in scripture. Sometimes we like, we want to hear the blessings of the Lord. We want to, we want to read the, the scriptures that, that make us feel good. But guess what? We got to read the fullness of the scripture so that we can get fully developed just like we do in the gym. Look, I'm praying that someone is listening to this, this, um, this word today. Again, I know I'm stuffy and sounding all crazy, but God is good and he's all powerful and he's given us the same strength for us to be able to push on and to help others. Look, sometimes our strength when we're standing and standing the way God has called us to, he wants us to stand this way so that others can see us. He wants to see us, you know, even when we're not in the best mood or in the best place, God wants to use us in those places as an example. Let's not fail the Lord. Let's do what he called us to do to the end. God bless you. I love you. I'm praying that as we continue on through this week, like I said before, we're, this is the finale of um, our youth month. This is T-shirt Sunday, so we're wearing our T-shirts. Um, and so we're enjoying the Lord. We're having an awesome time in God. I thank God for all of the youth leaders that we have in our church. We have four ministries, well, five youth ministries in, a, in there, and we have great leaders. And God is really doing a great and powerful work with us. Thank God for you that's listening to today. Please spread the message that God has given power to the believers. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for what you have said and what you have done. And Lord, you're outpouring. Lord, we thank you for those who have tapped in, even the ones who have just kind of watched.